Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this session, we will look at another example of how we can use modeling to help solve a business uh, situation. This particular business situation cho chosen is rather familiar and it involves uh, finding the break-even quantity of a particular situation. So in this case, we are talking about a real estate developer uh, who is selling house and there's only one type of house. Each house is selling at uh, $115,000. So land is part of the cost. It costs $55,000, uh, $28,000 for material. So all these are adding to the costs to construct the house. Furthermore, there is also the office space rental. Uh, supplies, utilities, and also, of course also the salaries of the various people in the company. And you have commission on top of the sales. Right? Commission is the part that you pay to the salesperson uh, for each house that is successfully sold. So what's the question here? Well, the question is how many houses should we sell so that Ponderosa development can break even? How many house do we need to sell? Now, first thing first is that we need to understand that uh, uh, break even quantity, right? So break even quantity is the number of uh, items, in this case house, that we need to sell before we can uh, break even. But what do you mean by break even, right? So break even means to have uh, that we initially experience negative profits because we haven't uh, recovered our original expenditure. So break even means the state of having uh, profits equals to zero. Okay. Now, uh, to the extent that profit is the leftover of uh, revenue after accounting for uh, uh, costs, total costs involved. So we can also say that it is the revenue uh, minus total costs. Total revenue minus total costs equal to zero. So break even is the state uh, when total revenue equals to total costs. Okay. So this is a very simple uh, mathematical equation and it is also very easy to model but you'd be surprised that whenever I pose this example to my class of students almost always when I ask them uh, how to solve it someone and usually two to three to four students will get it wrong why why well the thing is this uh, we we see that revenue, if we call it R, minus total cost, uh, that consists of fixed cost and variable costs, equals to zero, right? So it is down to this equation, and uh, which is not difficult. And my class of students, they are year two, year three university students, shouldn't have any problem with the mathematics. So indeed, it is not the problem with mathematics. Then where's the problem? The problem is in terms of accounting for the costs in particular, is a particular cost a fixed cost or a variable cost? That is the most confusing part. Why is that so? I thought fixed cost um, is fixed cost, you know, variable is variable. Well, uh, let's do a simple exercise. Uh, what is this 115,000? That's price, unit price, right? So that goes with the revenue, that's fine. Now, this land cost, is it? You, uh, is it fixed cost or variable cost? Don't tell me, you keep it in your mind. Uh, materials, fixed cost or variable cost? Labor, per house here, fixed cost or variable cost? How about office space? I remember that in some economic classes, they talked about rental and that is basically a variable cost, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, as you rent more of, uh, rent for longer months, number of months the the total rent will increase and so that's a variable cost how about utilities and supplies sounds like variable to me 
it sounds like variable to you i guess how about salary the more people you hire more you have to spend on total salary right all these sounds like variable cost as well but actually what happens is this a true variable cost in this break-even calculation um, has to be so a co has to be a cost that depends on the quantity the break-even quantity that we are trying to count or determine okay so let's put it this way a cost is considered variable if uh, its total co amount increases or changes with changing uh, with uh, is dependent on Q that's it okay so a cost is considered variable if it is uh, its total amount all right is dependent on Q and otherwise uh, fixed so this statement summarizes the the litmus test that we can use to classify a cost and that's the most important trick in solving this break-even equation uh, that we categorize the costs correctly so let's redo this exercise what nature is this cost fifty five thousand dollars is it true that when we ha have to build another house the the land cost will multiply by two right because it states here not that we know real estate but because this question here says every house costs a land cost of fifty five thousand dollars so two houses hundred and ten thousand dollars the more houses we build the higher this amount of costs so that's the variable cost it varies with q the quantity that we build that we manufacture right uh some materials twenty eight thousand dollars variable because the question says per house per house right maybe it is uh, maybe in another development there is a fixed cost of uh, cement bought wholesale you know something like that and uh no matter how how much you use it'll be more than enough so so that that basically is fixed cost you you are not going to be spending more on the cement for another development but in this case no so they are going to uh, spend more the more houses they build they will spend more on materials right so this is variable total labor costs now total labor can be on a on a contract basis right so whether you build one house or ten houses uh, it's the fixed pool of labor then in that case it is not variable it is fixed but in this case the labor uh, costs are basically charged on a per house basis okay so there are different ways to do that and it's not uh, always the case that whenever there's labor it's variable or it is fixed it is not dependent on the nature of the costs but whether the cost itself depends on the quantity that we are counting all right so in this case since it is, since it is per house basis it is therefore 